the thing that's important to understand is that if in your initial dealing with a behavior, it fails, your attempts fail, and when I say your, your attempts to be able to understand the other person's positive intent and to communicate with them and to try to get different responses, if your attempts fail and then you start to escalate and so forth, well, guess what? You're going to be pulling their triggers. The only thing that I'm saying is that there are things that you can do if you're a good conflict manager, and there's things that you could do to become one if you're not one. And the only thing that I know how to do in those situations is fall on the sword. Fall on the sword. Go back and apologize for your behavior. You see, I, I can't, if, I if I want you to apologize for your behavior, the first thing I want to do is look at myself and say, has my behavior been stellar towards you? Is there anything at all that I could apologize for? I'm going to sit down and start apologizing to you and say, you know, we've been working together for three and a half years and I know there's been a lot of tension and I just went to a conflict management class. <laughs> and when I went to the class, you know what? You know what the class did? It caused me to look at myself. And what I realize is I've been looking at you, but I haven't been looking at myself. And I'll tell you, I feel really bad right now. And for the last day, I felt really bad. You know why I feel bad? Because I feel bad about the way I've treated you. And I wanted to talk to you because I just wanted to say to you that, that sometimes, you know, you'll do something, I'll get irritated, and then I come back, and I do this, and I do this, and I do this. And I just want to tell you, I am so sorry. And, and I, I want you to know my intention is to have a better relationship with you in the future. And I, and I really hope if you feel, if you ever feel that I'm disrespectful to you, that you will come to me. I, I, I promise you I won't get defensive. If you see any of that in me at all, tell me. I mean, I mean it. I'm serious because I don't want to do it. If I've got habits of, of and I, I mean, I will fall on the sword. I will do it. Why? Because I know I'm my own worst enemy. I know that if I'm not getting the response, well, hey, I went through a divorce. It was painful. And I went through a lot of reflective time to say, what could I have done differently? Oh, man, a lot, a lot. What did she do wrong? Oh, oh, yeah, see, that was the problem, is I was, I was seeing all the things she was doing wrong, but not seeing what I was doing wrong. And the thing is, if, if I could see things in me and change those, it probably would have changed a lot of things in her because we bounce off each other and we go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and while we're going back and forth if I'm only looking at her behavior I can just count lots of things but I'm not seeing my own but if I come to you and I tell you about all the things you're doing wrong when you see all the things I'm doing wrong and it appears that I don't see myself well that's not much of an intervention so many of the intervention techniques that I suggest are ones where you start by admitting some of the things that you would like to change about yourself and you ask them for help in doing that because my goal is to work more effectively with you in the future. That's my goal. And we're going to talk in a, in, a, in a few minutes about a technique that is a three-part conversation and the first part of the conversation is goals. And you start the conversation in the intervention by telling why you're here, why you're having it. So in the one with the pastors, the first thing I always recommend is don't do an intervention as a group. I, only as a last resort. I think group interventions can be very powerful, but they can also backfire on you. You're much safer if you can have one-on-one -on -one where in a, behind closed doors you talk to a person and in that you're very open and, and, and you are showing the person one-on-one -on -one how much you care about the relationship. What is my goal? A and people a lot of times will misunderstand, why are you doing this? Why are you having this conversation? And if they don't know in their mind, they will make up a reason and it won't be a good one. And then they will react to the reason that they've concocted. You're trying to blame me, you think you're better than me, blah, 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 blah. So I want to right up front tell you what my goal is. 
I want to tell you that I care about you. I want to have a good relationship. I'm so sorry that we've had the problems that we've had in the past. Maybe even give them a reason why you're talking to them now. I went to a conflict management class. Just something that they can, because it's like, why is she talking to me now after three and a half years and all this stuff going on? Well, because I've seen the light. And the light is just simply this. We work together and I want to have a good relationship. And I'm really sorry for my own behavior. And I want to start freshly. And, and you, you get all this stuff out and, and what happens so many times is when you're really sincere and you're really open, the other person opens up too. Maybe not to the degree you like them to, but maybe even just a little bit. Hey, it's a whole lot different than the defensiveness that you would have gotten if you would have started out by blaming them. 